morning, good morning, it's time to rise and shine. Good morning, good morning, good morning, I hope you're feeling fine. Good morning, get up, get out of bed, it's time to wake up, you sleepy head. Time to wake up, it's a brand new day, and we can't miss out on that day to decay. Get your day planned out to be at your best, and you gotta make sure you got the right back test. Wipe the sleep away, make sure you're awake, cause we don't have time for fat finger mistakes. And race your condos will pay the bills, but you gotta be quick to get those fills. Follow your plan to keep your pockets thick, if that market gaps up, look for Uncle Rick. Small gap down means it's time for a duck, but if it doesn't set up, then we don't give up. Good morning everybody, you know why we came here today, now let's get to it. Yeah. Let's go! Good morning, everyone. Happy Monday. Today is December 18th. Hope everybody had a good weekend. S&P up 13 and a half. NASDAQ up 26. Russell up 10. Dow up 55. Gold and silver slightly green, notes and bonds slightly red, 10-year yield up half percent, oil up almost 3%, natty gas up almost 4%, uh, soybeans flat, wheat lower, corn lower, uh, euro slightly green, pound slightly red, Bitcoin down 2%, VIX up 1.63%, but VIX futures lower. Pretty uh, pretty minimal, just a little over 16-point expected move on the day. But it is Monday, my friends. It is Monday. I'll be doing my AM ratio. I will be doing my 9.45 AM iron condor. <clears throat> I will mix in some re-entries. I've got to close out my 3.5 and my 3.7. Those both should be profitable. I will also be entering a 3.4 DTE this morning. So that's what I got on the docket. Market opens in one minute. Like the four dollar strikes will be about fifteen wide, maybe maybe twenty. No news today. <clears throat> really, no news today or tomorrow. Yeah, these are these are power hour premiums, which does not look good for power hour unless we crash today. All right, so it looks like the, yeah, it looks like we may get 20 wide. My order will start coming in here. Oh, I forgot. I used the uh, White Tiger's little auto expected move indicator. Oh, wait, I got to put it in though. So let's see. Would be about sixteen point three. So the upper expected move a little over forty seven forty seven, lower expected move about a little over forty seven oh three. Okay, so it's not accurate yet. Yeah, yeah, it's still showing still showing Fridays. Okay. I'll wait. I usually don't plot it till a little bit after anyway. Here comes my AM ratio. Looks like we'll try to get filled on the 4740 calls and the 4720. No. 
Just trying to replace the trade. Price is moving higher. Looks like the 4740s and the 4720s. So 20 wide. Filled at 1730. Actually, it seems like it should have filled me on the 25s, not the 20s. Look closer to four on 25s. Chris, did you get filled on the 25s on the put side? Hmm. Let me see here. Monday AM ratio closest to four. Hmm. Yeah, I got me the 4720s for some reason. All right, so I'm in the AM ratio. I got to jump over to my other monitor and close out my double calendars. Um, each the the only difference is the number of bots you can do. So, I would just start with the uh, you know depending on how many bots you want to build. You want to build a million? Yeah, then you better go with the big dog. <laughs> I think I started with the one with three or whatever it is, and then I quickly realized. So I I think I upgraded three times within three days. All right, so here's my three, five exit, posting in the calendar channel. That was a nice winner. Three seven will be a little winner. Build on my three seven. Posted my three seven as well. I've also got a four seven and a six seven. Four seven is up about thirteen percent. My six seven is up about fourteen percent. I already closed half my six seven and half my four seven on Friday for over ten, so they're up a little bit more. Dick K got the enterprise package. Call for custom quoting, please.
All right, so S&P up a little bit at the open up 17 from Friday's close. Yeah. So if, also, if, Meech, if you if you if you turn a bot off, that doesn't count against your number. So you know, if you only it's it's however many bots you have running or enabled at one time. So you know, even if you do the thirty, you could have sixty bots, but if only thirty of them are turned on, then that's all. That's all that matters. So if you're just going to use the bots to enter, yeah, you wouldn't you wouldn't need to turn it off then if you're going to use the OCOs to exit. Um, you would just need to set the bot up just to enter and just don't set an exit. Well, actually, now that I say that out loud, I'm not sure if that's right. Um, because if you close, if you close the order and toss that you've entered in a bot, yeah, I guess if you turn the bot off, that would work. Getting a little volatility pumped into my AM ratio. Uh, Cosmo, I will potentially. I, I kind of. I'm kind of using my re-entries a little bit more discretionary. I just put on a my AM ratio, so I don't. I'm not really interested in loading up on top of that at the exact same price level at the exact same time. So I've, on Mondays, I've also got a, a 9.45 central trade. So in about an hour, another one will come on. So depending on what happens here, I may wait on my re-entries till later. Um, I just don't want to get too overloaded at one price level or one kind of area. Uh, all right, let's see White Tiger if it'll update now. There we go. So the upper expected move is around 47.42. Downside forty seven oh nine. Opt for dollar. What is that? Is that that charting service? I, I think I used them in like 1994. <laughs> yeah, it's been a long time.
Uh, they, I would just, it just gives me an idea of what the expected range is for the day. Uh, sometimes I will do, you know, some discretionary like futures trades around the expected move. Um, but it's, it's really just as reference. I, it, it's not anything critical that I absolutely have to have. I just kind of started doing it a while back and I just like it as a reference. And it kind of alerts me to, you know, if we're, I mean, it's not the exact criteria, but it kind of alerts me of, you know, if it's above that, it's typically going to be, you know, we're in the kind of the up day type territory um, or down day type territory if it goes to the downside. Okay. Maybe I maybe I didn't hit apply or something. I put it in right at the open and it still kept my value in the settings as of the, what I had in there for Friday. And I just did it and now it moved. So I don't maybe I did something wrong. I like it though. Yeah, I mean, I think that's fair, Dao. I, but I, th I think I think of support and resistance differently than other people. You know, I mean, I, you know, I, 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 I use it as a kind of a line in the sand. So it's not something I do every day. You know, I'm not shorting at the hot upper one. I'm not buying at the lower one. It's just, it's just reference. Oh, I got to do my uh, my three four DTE. So give me just a second. So I'm going to go Trying to get filled on my three, four.
this. Six eighty. Sorry, guys, just trying to. I had some overlapping strikes in trade here, so I'm going to try to get my 3 4 filled and toss. There we go. All right, just posted my 3-4 in the calendar channel. Check on my 4-5 uh, DTE. It's down a little bit with this push-up. Any kind of move down would work nicely on that. By the way, if you're new here, and I know I'm kind of jumping around, it's typically got a lot going on on Monday mornings, so don't uh, don't be scared away if you're wondering what the hell is going on here. From a zero DTE perspective, all I've done is enter a AM my AM iron condor that's on my trade plan. All the other stuff is trying to get filled on some double calendars from Friday and entering a new one this morning. What do you mean? I don't know what you're saying, Chris. Can you translate, retranslate for me? SPX hovering around 47.33. Yeah, I haven't seen any decay. Kind of some juice kind of got pumped in to the AM ratio after entry. Now it's pretty much where we got in. Uh, it's the same expiration, but you know, you're choosing different strikes, you're getting in at a different time. Volatility levels are different, so yeah, I mean the expirations are the same. Previously, I wasn't doing a lot of three fours for that reason, just because it was kind of doubling up on the getting more exposure in that same expiration, but I just as we've seen, calendars are doing well in this low vol environment. So just kind of loading up with more exposure. Next week, I will not be. In fact, I'm not sure what I want to do on Friday. 
going into uh, Christmas week. Tend to not do very well. Probably won't do any one. Uh, probably won't do any B and Bs. I may just I may skip calendars altogether on Friday. I, I got to dig in a little bit more to see if my thesis is correct. My AM ratio condor is at forty five dollars. I know it wasn't kind to B and B's, and I'm pretty sure I remember it being pretty bad for all all uh double calendars. Yeah, I want to go through the trade logs, Cody. Exactly. Pull up the back tests for that specific week in the past and see what uh see what happened. Yeah, you can see VIX is just kind of climbing all morning from the open. VIX is up two and a quarter percent now. We can look at some other positions here. So time flies. <clears throat> so we've got the DS twenty two. Yeah, so I'll continue to hold this until one DTE. I mean, if best case scenario would be we're just kind of chopping around this area and then one DTE, which would be the 21st, we start to get a little profit hump building. And that's ideal. Will that happen? I don't know. Um, got the DS 29. Similar scenario, so we have no risk to the upside on that one. The D's 22, we've got a little bit of risk to the upside. So ideally, we kind of chop around here and then push a little bit lower as the profit hump builds to the downside. Get the GN5. It's not too far off from where we put it on. Got an ES Hedgehog. Just put that on last week. We've got our gold strangle. It's profitable after adjustment. We've got a reverse hog in gold. That's uh, just a little over break even. Uh, we've got a short strangle in MES. We've adjusted that one. Natty gas is up a little bit.
Well, I was thinking about it, Dao. But um, because of the low expected move, meaning they would, I haven't even looked at it, but it'd probably be fairly cheap. But now we got VIX expanding instead of contracting. Usually on Mondays, volatility starts high and contracts. But we're seeing a little different story today. So definitely not interested in jumping in now. Possibly later in the day, depending on what happens. Rick's trading at about 925 right now. I mean, you'd need about a 20-point move up or down to hit a profit target in Rick right now based on the current pricing. And the expected move is well below that, so... Yeah, so day out, the I mean it, the pattern is that and obviously this is not every single time but the pattern is you know the market makers pump up the VIX over the weekend to, you know I mean you think about it you know a lot of a lot of new traders will think oh man I get free theta decay on the weekend right so they will sell premium on Friday and try to take it off Monday well if you've ever done that you know that that just is not really a good strategy because there is no there is no free lunch. Um, you know, so what you'll see a lot of times is volatility actually contracts at the end of the week and then they pump it up at the beginning of the week um, to kind of compensate for that. So um, that's that's kind of the quote unquote normal pattern. My six seven is getting close to twenty percent. SPX pushing higher. SPX up twenty now, or ES is up twenty. Starting to see a little bit of decay in the AM ratio. Ever so slight. I can trail my I'm down in a buck. Sure, I'm going to stop down.
NASDAQ up 70, Russell the strongest up almost three quarters of a percent, Dow just slightly green. SPX, early 64, 74, about 91 points away from all-time highs. Getting a new high of year as we speak. So somebody was asking about re-entry. So I'm going to go ahead and now we've got, you know, price has moved out of center. Volatility is actually staying a little bit bid. So I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and turn on my re-entries just to add a little bit more. So my re-entries are coming in at So my six sevens get close to 20%. Let's see, what did I get into that one? Uh, yeah, trading naked. So I just toggled it on. And so if the criteria fits, then it'll, it'll enter. Um, the reason it, I mean, the, the VIX, you know, I have a, VIX filter on there. So if VIX is down more than 0.25% at the open, then it wouldn't, wouldn't trigger. But other than that, I have my entry time window set from the open until 2.30. So we're obviously still in that window. So that's why it just, well, right when I toggled it on, that's why it entered. Six seven, I got in at three eighty five. Uh, four sixty five. Mm -hmm. 
<clears throat> I'm going to put an order in at 470 to close my 6-7. VIX futures are just slightly red. Spot VIX is up Uh, Dark Avenger, I just posted in the calendar channel, 470 is where my order is. Wouldn't be a closed debit. I would close it for a credit. You buy it for debit, close for a credit. Uh, Meech, I used the, uh, no, I used the other one, um, whatever they call it. I used the bot algo. Yep. Uh, I'm trying to remember why there's something... Is it with the broker resting, you can't adjust your, like, so if you have a trailing stop, so I, I have to manually trail my stop in um, Trade Steward if, if I have a strategy that I'm using a trailing stop on. So I think you have to use bot algo if you want to do that. If I'm not mistaken, I could be wrong. Oh, yeah, there you go. So that can, you know, it can be good and bad. I wouldn't say it's better necessarily, Chris. It's just what it depends on the strategy and the what you're trying to accomplish with it. But, um, you know, it's so it's submitted as a market order from trade steward to toss so you need to make sure you understand like it's going to be a little bit more delayed than if you had a resting 
stop market order and toss, which obviously, like I said, that, you know, that can be good or bad. You could see, I've seen more slippage than I probably would have gotten. And I've seen less too. So it just, you know, it kind of works both ways. I think that would be accurate, Meech. I just have always, I've just been using bot algo because a lot of my trades I'm still adjusting the stop down. But I think if it was just fixed, I don't I you know, you may you may post that to Jordan. Tag him at Go Big Orange in the Trade Steward channel just to confirm, but I think that's I think what you're saying is accurate. Uh, side to stop, I do, um, uh, I do net position. So here's my AM ratio, for example. I'm not sure what you're on. Oh, yes. A stop based on. Wait. Net position. Okay. Yeah. That is, that's right. If you have broker resting, then that pops up. Then I would assume you only do short only. Yeah, that's what it looks like. No worries, Meech. Ask away. This love it. that's that's what this time's all about. After we get into orders, yeah, and anybody anybody else here. After we get into positions and we've got downtime, feel free to ask any questions. You definitely want to with the bot stuff. You definitely you know I've been I've been using them for a month or less, so definitely want to confirm anything with uh with Jordan. He's pretty responsive. Uh, I think are you I think maybe you're talking about the FOMC trade, Meech. So with the FOMC trade, if I had been using the bot, it would have worked fine. I I I manually put that one in and was using an OCO. And I put my OCO on the full iron condor as opposed to uh just the shorts. Cause I, I just I wasn't even paying attention. I wasn't thinking about that the um that the bids would be gone on that trade that quickly, which I should have. So I, was, I bought the five cent wings, but I just, I just, it was just me not paying attention. Yeah. So the way the, the way the bot works is if it, it has the stop on the full iron condor, but as soon as a leg goes bidless, it takes that out of the equation. So you'll see sometimes the bot will close the two shorts and the call and the long call. But it won't close the long put because it has no bid. So it's constantly updating. 
and checking that for you, which is nice. I just didn't have an FOMC bot set up. Yeah, the net position and the bot algo will take care of that. Yeah, he just posted something I saw. Nothing definite, but I was in their Discord yesterday. What did he say? He said something about Oh, yeah, he said in the verified user chat in the uh, Trade Steward Discord, he said, aware that many, many of you got emails about the May 10, 2024 final transition for TDA to Schwab. I heard from TDA today that they are beginning to process onboarding of commercial API products to the Schwab API, and more information should be coming, quote, very soon. So whatever that means. That should work. Meach. Yeah, any any kind of urgent or technical questions, probably best, you know, feature requests. That that all can be done in their Discord. If you if you tag Jordan, his handle is go big orange, uh, in our trade steward channel. He's he's pretty responsive that way too, if you tag him. All right, so my AM ratio is up 12%. My re-entries are hovering around unchanged. S&P is chopping around 47.35. Got a few points away from the upper expected move. Yeah, Chris, I, I honestly I don't know how they are handling the um the moves. I don't know what the order there's a specific order. I, I, I heard at one point, you know, if you traded futures or futures options, that it would be later because they hadn't gotten all their systems fixed. Um and a couple other things. But I, I don't know. I mean, I haven't talked to anyone about it for months. Um so it may be a good idea, I'm not sure. I've also heard people being told that they're not going to be moved until one date. And then all of a sudden they opened up their platform, they were moved. So take that for what it's worth.
So I've trailed my stop on my AM ratio about three bucks. Three bucks so far. $4 strikes are about 10 wide on SPX now. All right, my friends, anything else before we sign off? I've got a 9.45 a.m. Iron Condor that'll come on, 9.45 Central. So that's in about 20 minutes. And then I've got a quiet lunch if that qualifies. And then we will be back for power hour. And we'll probably have $4 straddles at power hour. So be ready for that. All right, my friends, have a good day. See you in power hour.